Hello YouTube, Moose Cow here with a little bit of an overdue video. Since the uh, uh, unveiling of our uh, Kings and Kaisers map yesterday, uh, and Madman and I will be doing a YouTube war game uh, in a week or so, uh, I felt it was appropriate, uh, coinciding with that, to do a video about my Kings and Kaisers, or 1914, cigar box that serves as income tracker and uh, also a task force markers uh, container and uh, I use it coincidentally fits these HBG build plates perfectly pretty much so I uh, store these in here for the time being kind of give them a home to pack them away someplace but these are really cool if uh, I got to finally use some of these in a BBR game recently and uh, it was a lot of fun worked really well Got a couple options for Germany. But anyway, so I throw these in here because uh, just as a place to store them. We got China, got the Soviet Union or Soviet Republic. And then I also keep this Confederacy one in here because uh, one of these days I also would like to make a uh, Turtle Dove alternate history variant to this. But, you know, we'll get to that bridge when we cross it if, if we ever get there. But anyway, without further ado, here is my uh, Kings and Kaisers or 1914 cigar box income tracker and uh, as you can see here uh, this is actually a blow up of the western front from well before before we started working on this when we had to deal with the original 1914 map um, we made this blow up for the western front to give their give uh, players plenty of room to work with and uh, uh, this was a file on Axis and Allies the Axis and Allies Facebook group that somebody put up but the, it was filled with lots of extra information that didn't need to be there like town names and uh, other lines and stuff like that. So I had Madman, Madman clean it up, and he did that uh, just well. So this is just a blow up of the Western Front to give people more room. But because of my task force markers and also the the, the uh, change in our map, we don't really use this much anymore. So I don't really plan to use this, but it mostly just sits in here um, because since there aren't the roundels. Uh, like in my 1940 or my BBR uh, or, you know, my uh, cigar box for my other Axis and Allies games, um, the weight of the roundels that are, are usually stored in here um, are enough to keep this from flipping. And uh, so right now the main purpose of this really is just that it's a, it uh, gives the weight to uh, keep this down. So it's just um, uh, some pieces of wood that were cut and then taped over and uh, with that um, western front blow up um, uh, laminated and put on one side. Eventually on the other side I do want to add something else but for the time being it's just that and uh, so yeah you can see our the uh, let me move this down a little bit you can see this is the income tracker for uh, all nations of Kings and Kaisers or 1914 and then on either side we have uh, different task force marker options that I've acquired over time for the central powers and the allied powers so again if you haven't seen my other task force marker video very simple um, you take one that you want to use this is an Austria Austro Hungarian one or an Austria one specifically you throw that on there and then you grab the um, corresponding roundel that has a ring around it that matches the color of your units and you throw that on the board and the units there are there. So you just move one piece as opposed to many others. And uh, it helps, uh, it also has felt, a sheet of felt cut out on the bottom. So glides on the board quite nicely. You don't have to worry about scratching anything up. So, and then on the back of all my roundels that are magnetized, it's a 10 millimeter by one millimeter magnet from apexmagnets.com. These are a lot of fun, a lot of cool options to give you a lot of variety of uh, just different roundels to throw it on the board. Um, so, going over on, uh, just to kind of go over a little bit on uh, this side and uh, the central powers and the uh, allied powers, just as the different options. We have Austro-Hungarian, or sorry, Aust this is Austria. This one's Hungary. Um, uh, this one's actually a Bulgarian one. Not as exciting, but it's just that flag. And for Germany, we have 
cool naval one. We have a Prussian one. And then this is another German variation. They were very big into those eagles, you know. And then for the Ottomans, we have, we have, it was a little tricky for the Ottomans. Um, there weren't really many, there aren't really many options on HBG's site. They do have this colored ring, which works for them quite well, um, this like turquoise. Um, but uh, these are not actually Ottoman rondels. This is Dervish, uh, but Dervish State, which is a pro-Ottoman territory. And then I can't remember exactly what this is, but it's actually not an Ottoman rondel. And they actually fought in, the, there was a, it's a Middle East uh, country or um, uh, section that actually fought against the Ottomans, but since it, w it works color-wise, you know, it's a moon. It's the same thing, similar similar kind of thing, uh, and it's the same kind of green and stuff, so I use it for that just as a, for practicality's sake. And then there's also this square one, which is a, a Ottoman Air Force roundel, and obviously I can't put a, obviously I can't put a ring around it, but it is distinct enough, I think, and it works quite well. So there's that. And then here's the, you'll recognize this is the KMT China, but I use this as the pro, uh, since I had it, I use this as the pro central powers um, China. And then these are uh, uh, the Soviets, if, if they get activated into the game. So you have two different options that I've acquired, and obviously this is one we, one we all have from BBR. Um, now, normally these, I just keep these in the, the respective boxes of each power, um, rather than in the box here, I usually just keep them in the respective, the boxes of the respective powers. Over here with Russia, we have these three options. So this is the Air Force, Naval, and then this is a Hung uh, Romanian. And for France, there's not a lot of great options for France. For task force markers, uh, this is obviously you'll recognize this from the uh, standard out of box um, 1940 France, and it works quite well. But unfortunately, most of the other ones that HBG has, they're just not really that exciting looking. They're, they're a lot of them are just like colonial ones, or just like like half of the French flag in blue or something like that. But just not visually great. But for the most part, you only need one for France anyway, and then for uh, the British Empire. We have the Navy. Uh, this one works well for, I think it's Canada. And then we got an uh, Indian one as well. And then we recognize this one for Japan. And again, some of these obviously are recycling ones that uh, uh, already exist from 1940. Uh, since 1914, Kings and Kaisers just uses like the flags for their primary roundels. We use the Air Force roundels for, I use the Air Force roundels uh, of the 1940 variations. Uh, as that was appropriate at the time. So this one works for Italy. Um, this was their, the, the Italian Air Force roundel back then. And then this one is a actually US. Now you'll notice the ring around it is black, um, but since there's not a dark green ver uh, ring for uh, the HPG cells, I figured um, this works well enough. So one day maybe I'll paint this dark green, but uh, for the most part, uh, not gonna need this too much, but yeah, the U.S. has this. This is our. This was a, the original um, U.S. Uh, Air Force roundel of the time period, and then of course we have this for the pro-allied uh, China faction, and then this is just the CSA um, mar uh, task force marker. It's like a naval CSA marker that, again, if we ever get to a turtle dove variant, um, I would use this. That's the plan for that, more or less. Um, and again, I will be painting this uh, ring a different color at some point. Um, but anyway, I digress. So that is, those are the task force markers. And then, zooming in a little bit more on here, just kind of go over, go over this again. Okay, so we have, actually, let me get back up. So this is the, this is the income and Victory Point Tracker that is going to be we're going to be using for our Kings and Kaisers game. This is what uh, Madman has made. However, since I have my own income tracker magnetized here, I'll be using that for my in to keep track of my income on my games. Um, but I will still be using these victory points, uh, the, the the top half to keep track of victory points and uh, minor cities and all that. So uh, stay tuned for that for our game. 
but anyway, backing up to the income tracker itself. Um, you can see this is the starting income for all of the nations in our game. Um, both factions of China start at eight IPCs. Um, the China, China will have a, a civil war that as long as they're not attacked, they'll have a civil war that'll start on the begin, uh, round three of our, of our 10 round game. So that will come into play then. Japan starts at 12 IPCs. Um, Italy starts at 16 now instead of 14. Uh, and then the Ottomans now start at 19 up from 16. We've bumped the US up from 20 to 21. Um, Austria-Hungary Austria still starts at 26. France we've bumped up from 24 to 28. Russia has been bumped up from 25 to 32. Um, the German Empire has been bumped up from 35 to 38, and the British Empire has been bumped up from 30 to a whopping 40. Now, as for these roundels down here, you're going to be curious as to what these are for. Um, this is a Bulgarian roundel, and this is a NATO roundel. Um, in our game, we have, again, different victory points, and one of the victory points is the Empire point, which both sides can acquire. And so what the Empire point is if you get to 85 or higher in the tracker, this being a combination of uh, German and Austro-Hungarian income, and the NATO roundel that I'm using temporarily until I find something more suitable, is uh, France and British Empire's um, income combined together. So it's like the right point from BBR, but it applies to both uh, nations, but it's, or sorry, both uh, sides, but again, it's, each of them is two powers income together and if they're at 85 or higher which is what that red dot is for then they have that point um, again for tur for the turtle dove variant that maybe one day we'll make um, th uh, that CSA is what is the you know the battle flag is what I would want to use for um, uh, the income of the CSA and then over here this is the Roundel we decided to use to go with for the Soviets. We really like the sickle and hammer. We really like the bright red. So if the Soviets are brought into the game, that is the um, that is their IPC tracker. They'll have a lower lower um, IPC starting value than that. They'll start at like uh, I think it's nine. They start at. But anyway, that just kind of give you a little overview of my Kings and Kaisers 1914 cigar box income tracker. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, I like this a lot. It's, uh, it's a good safe uh, space saver because it, you know, it saves, it, it puts stuff vertical without you having to put it on a wall, you know, uh, like some people have their mag magnetized um, uh, trackers on a, on a wall or something, but this stays on the table and just gets propped upright. There's, uh, as you can see, some ribbons that are stapled in here. And then there's tape around and on the inside and behind the um, income tracker, which is an HBG income tracker that I cut the tops and bottom off just to, so it would fit in here a little better. And uh, um, each roundel is magnetized. And then on the back, like my other uh, cigar box, is a sheet of ferrous material, which isn't magnetic itself, but it's something that magnets adhere to really, really well. Um, and that more or less about does it. So uh, you'll look forward to uh, seeing this in my Kings and Kaisers game with the Madman that we'll be, we will be playing next week or starting next week. We'll be doing a YouTube war. That's the plan at least. Um, and yeah, that about does it uh, for, oh yeah. And then for the other Chinese faction we are using, for the pro central power uh, Chinese faction, we are using this roundel right here, which, uh, we like a lot. This one's pretty cool. So, anyway. So that's that. Um, stay tuned for more content regarding Kings and Kaisers, more announcements, our game, our upcoming YouTube war game, and uh, also I'll be making some content just going over components and other things for Kings and Kaisers. So, stay tuned. And until next time, roll the dice better.